Okay, this is uh, Matt O'Ree. We're going to do a little look at some of the cool stuff he's got here at the Stone Pony, getting ready for a big show on October 28th, 2017. So, uh, you all set up here, Matt? Yeah, just about. We're, we're still, uh, we didn't sound check yet, but we're, uh, we're getting there. Okay, this is, uh, this is a lot of stuff. I know. So I've got a couple <laughs> questions, actually. Sure. First of all, these I know. These are both your Trainwreck Expresses, or? One's the Trainwreck Express. And the other one's a train rig rocket. Okay. That, that also has built in tremolo. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we can get to the signal chain when we get to the pedal board if you want. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. But you're going to AB those or mix them? Or? Yeah, I, I have one, one cabinet for each of the heads. Okay. So um, this first V4, Ampeg V4, has pre roller Greenback 30 watt 014 cone speakers in it. Okay. And that's hooked up to my train rig. <laughs> Uh, Express, nice. and then the train wreck rocket is going through the other V4, which is uh, po uh, well, post roller, but roller uh, black back 30 watt speakers with 1770, 1777 cones. Okay, and then for tonight, it looks like you've got 57s and 121s on both. Yeah, so we, we, I always I always double make the cabinet um, Royer 121s ribbon mics. You can't beat them; they're just phenomenal. And then I have a pair of. Transformerless 57 microphones, so they've been modified. Okay. The transformer has been taken out of the 57s, uh, taking out that mid-range hump because the train wrecks are so mid-range as they are. I don't really need that extra mid-range, you know, attenuation in a microphone. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And so then, essentially, the, the pedal board runs from, uh, of course, George L. Cable, uh, running, you know, from to, through a Layla dual switcher. To the two heads. Um, on one side again is my more of my lead tones from the Trainwreck Express to the Greenback 30s, and then the rocket is also hooked up to an, uh, a 70s solid state Echoplex. Oh, nice. So on my cleaner side of the, just the rocket's more known for its cleaner tones than the overdriven tones. Although it will overdrive when you crank it up, just like any good tube amp. So. Um, the Rocket, uh, I'm using more for the clean tones because it also has the built-in tremolo. So the tremolo effect with the Echoplex, this sounds phenomenal. Oh, beautiful. And yeah. then that with the Blackback speakers have more of that, ch even more of a chime than the Greenbacks do. The Greenbacks are more warmer, so that's why I'm using Blackbacks with that, with that amp. Okay, perfect. And I think I might have heard this before. Did you do a gear tutorial video on your website using... I did. Echoplex? Cor that's okay. correct. Yeah, same same Echoplex. I actually have, um, I have the original box with with it, which you probably saw in the video. But this okay. this is just sort of a makeshift uh, uh, surround uh, of it, so I can I can uh, rack mount it into a, a oh, nice. into a shelf, so it's easy enough to service, easy enough to take out, um, and of course put it back in the original box if need be. Okay. Beautiful. And speaking of pedals, because you, you started to talk a little bit about them. Yeah, so, so that, again, the signal flow starting with the pedal board. Um, George L. Cable, I have a, a, a Neutrix uh, shorting end so I can safely change guitar, you know, guitars uh, on the fly. Uh, into uh, It's a 1967 uh, Clyde McCoy Vox Wah, which was in one of my episodes as well. Sure. Um, the signal then goes into my tuner, which is a Sonic Research Turbo Tuner, which I, I really love their tuners. They're, sure. so, they're so quick. Fast, um, accurate. They're, they're excellent. I uh, seem to be remember being the one who told you about. That. Yes, you were. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. And then the signal goes into uh, a tube screamer, which is a Keeley modified, you know, reissue. And I have the gain the overdrive all the way down because I only really use it for essentially a clean boost when I'm using a single coil like the Fender guitar. Um, then the signal path goes right to the Layla, and then I'm switching from amp to amp, or I can run them both at the same time if I want to. Nice. The only other pedal on the board is, a, is just a switching pedal to turn the tremolo on and off and then the echoplex on and off. So this pedal does, has nothing to do with signal path, it's only, it's only on off sure. switching. Sure. And then finally... And then, and then I, I, I made my own George L snakes, you know, snake cables coming out of the pedal board just to make setup faster and easier for oh, night, night to night. Beautiful. And then the part that I've been mouth watering over already <laughs> is your guitar We've got a guitar world. Start from the end. It looks sure. like an old talent. This is a. Uh, I just put this in, in my Fender episode too. This is a custom shop '67 uh, his, uh, relic from from Fender, and it's got Peter Florence pickups in it. Um, his '59 uh, Tele pickups. Okay. And it's just it, so, it sounds tremendous. I love the paint job that Fender did on it. It really looks 
legit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, doesn't have that belt sander thing either. No, no, and yeah, but even besides that, the guitar just sounds so great. Um, especially with Peter Peter's pickups in it, I, I just love it. It's got the brass saddles on it, and, and all the aging. It just it just looks so f fantastic on it. Yeah, I, I remember I reading it. somewhere you use Flor Peter Florence pickups on a few things. Sounds like I do. Yeah, I, I I really like his pickups. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. What's next? Next is a. Next, since I'm close to home, we're at the Stone Pony again here in Asbury Park, not far from my house. I brought out my 61 Fender Stratocaster, okay. which I usually don't take on the road. I mostly just use it for recording nowadays, but sure. since I'm so close to home, I, I know it's safe here at, at, at the Pony, so um, I, I do enjoy playing it still live, of course, you know, especially okay. through the Rocket. It really sounds fantastic. Oh, I, but, I know. I've heard it, but just to be clear, this is not a relic. This is no, not this a reissue. Is, this this is, is an original 61 Stratocaster. Very nice. Everything's original except for the frets and the nut. Pickups nice. still got the three-way switch in it, original pots, cap, everything. Wow! I, I did an episode on my tutorial series about this guitar. I did too. see that. Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid to touch it, but it looks sweet. It looks nice and light too. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Beautiful. And then next up is Gibson, Gibson Land. Yeah. What's better than Les Paul? I know. Two. Two. <laughs> this is the same 2001 I've been playing with forever. Gibson Custom Shop Historic Les Paul. It's the same one that I won the Guitar Center contest oh, right. in 2006 with. Yeah. All right. And I, I, I gig mainly with this almost all the time. And this is an R8? Or this is an R8, yeah. yeah. And this has Peter Florence pickups in it. Yeah. I have an R9, which I don't have with me this evening. I usually use that R9 to fly with when I'm doing fly dates. Okay. Um, just, I got so attached to this guitar, I just don't want anything to happen to it in, in the air. I don't, I don't blame you. And, and, and I will say for the record that I played this guitar, and to this day, it's, it's the best Les Paul I've ever played. So. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. And the next one up is... This is another this is an R9, another 2001 that was had a historic makeover by Dave Johnson. Uh, Brazilian Rosewood fretboard. This one has wolf tone pickups in it, and the person that I bought it from had put them in, and I just liked the way they sounded so much that I just didn't want to monkey with it too much. As much you know, I love Peter Florence's pickups. Maybe someday sure. down the line I might I might put Peter's in it, but, but it, it was kind of nice to have. It was, no, it's not broke, so don't fix it. But yeah. it's kind of nice to have something that's not the same as all the other ones. You know? Yeah, beautiful. So, so I just left it. But this one's nice and light too. It's a beautiful guitar. Now, actually, you've got a little history with this guitar, don't you? Yeah, this was actually my guitar teacher's the guy that I studied with, Bernie Browsweater. This was actually his Les Paul. And then after he passed away, his bass player Bill Cherinsky uh, okay. inherited this guitar essentially. Um, and then it went out to Dave Johnson for, for a lot of work. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. And then the last one up is a custom double neck that I just did a, a gearatorial episode on. And this was made by a good friend of mine, this guy Jeff Schloeder in, in uh, Middletown, New Jersey. And uh, he and I did, designed it and he built this guitar. It took him about two, two years to do it. But uh, oh, wow. it's, 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 it's such a beautiful guitar. I, I wanted to have a, a, a double neck because I wanted that 12 string, but I didn't want to get stuck with just the 12 string on stage. I needed sure. a, six, a six string to play solos on. And I didn't really want to get the Gibson because it was such an iconic thing with Jimmy Page as much exactly. as I love him. Yeah. I, I wanted to do something custom for, for, my, for myself, you know. Very nice. Very nice. And, and these are also Peter Florence pickups too. All, all four? All four of them, yeah. But Peter, Peter hand wound these for this guitar. Okay, now you got this, I know you got this just before you did a uh, tour with Bon Jovi. Did you use this on the tour? I, I didn't, I, yeah, I actually didn't need it for the tour, but um, the first time this saw the, day, the light of day was, was at the last big show we did at the Stone Pony. Oh, nice. Yeah. And it's like, I was there. It, it was just finished, it didn't even have the back plates yet on it, but. Oh, wow. Um, and, it, uh, and the back plates are made out of ebony. Oh, that's right, I just noticed that. Yeah. Very nice. And I know it sounds great because I've heard it heard it used in anger. So. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much it for my rig today. This this is this is nice to have a headliner show because I can bring out both cabinets and both heads yeah. and, and have the ability to switch. If I'm doing a if I'm doing an opener gig, it's, it's usually just one head, one cabinet, on stage, off stage, as fast as possible. Yeah. And, and I barely even use a pedal board on those gigs. Sure. I just plug straight into the train wreck. No, no pedals. Just turn the amp up and, and go. Yeah, well, it's going to be a big night, and uh, there's, there's, there are an awful lot of us who wish we could justify even a 4x12, much less <laughs> 2. 
<laughs> much less dragging them around. And miking them. And miking them, yeah. yeah. Very nice. Awesome. All right. Very Thanks. nice. Thanks for joining yeah, thanks. us. Thanks for uh, taking it. the time. My pleasure. All right. All right. We'll see, we'll see you soon. Thank you.